welcome back to Buffalo Times. I'm Nancy Shade. I'm here in Greensboro and I am with Rod and Elaine Kerr. Elaine is an artist and Rod does all her picture frames, beautiful picture frames. And we're going to talk about what she's doing with her artwork, how she started and where she is now with it, and where she's arrived with it, and talk to Rod about he grew. You grew up where in Lindenville? I grew up in Lindenville, and I've lived in Greensboro since 1971. I moved over this way because I was working for a commercial plumbing outfit, and just to cut down on the drive from Lindenville to Morrisville to Stowe. I planned on being here one year. Here it is. 19 or 2021, I'm still here and don't plan on leaving. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you learn to do the woodwork? It just from being a plumber as an apprentice, I worked under one guy and he said, you need to know all about the construction trade to be a good plumber. And so that is why I worked with wood and this and that, but when I get sick of working with pipes, it gives me something to do nights and weekends. Well, at Linden Institute, did they have a shop? Uh, yes, they did, but when I was in high school, all I took was college prep courses. Did you end up going to college? No. But that the prep was the good thing to be able to do because you... Right. Yeah, I mean, I took mechanical... They teach you to learn. Drafting and... A couple business courses and this and that and things just fell into fell into line, I guess you would call it. And you built this house. Yes. And and what year was that? Nineteen seventy two. And now now it's a gallery and your home and and your workshops. Mm -hmm. yes. And this is this is a wonderful thing <laughs> that you're doing. Tell me, Elaine, how did you get started as a painter? Did you have painting in your school, uh, you were you were raised around Lake Willoughby in which uh, town? In Westmore, Westmore, Vermont. Can you tell us a little bit about that and show us any paintings that come up from sure. those years? Well, I grew up on a farm way up on the mountain, and it was um, a lovely spot overlooking Willoughby Lake, and I think that's where my inspiration started as a young girl, just loving everything that I see or saw there. And uh, I remember at 12 years old, I did my first sketch that I had ever done. And it was of an elderly woman. And my mother just loved it. But you know, I don't know what ever happened to that. I wish I had it now, but I don't. And then- You have the memory. I do have that memory. And yeah. the beginning. <clears throat> the beginning of my artwork. And then I just played with artwork all my life. I've done gifts for people and family members, and um, I didn't really get you, in. This is this is sort of a, a, a probably a way of using it as a gift. It is as art too. It is because yes. it's functional, but it also has the beautiful sunflower on it. And it, it's a nightlight. Oh, it's a nightlight. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize that. That's a good idea. Uh, people are loving these. This is actually going to be a gift for my granddaughter. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, one of my granddaughters. She got her eye on it, so she says, <laughs> I want that. So. Very good. Here, I'll yeah. put that for you. Yeah. Well, don't you also have a, a painting of the barn, of your father's barn? I do. Where is that one? I think maybe it's right here. Oh, it's here. over there. Yes. And I got it, right. I think it's neat to be able to have you start with um, when did, how, how did this happen that you did this painting? Okay, so this is a painting that I did of my dad's barn. My dad built this many years ago. I, I would say probably in 1936. Before you were born. Before I was <laughs> born, yes. Uh, there were seven children in the family. Oh my word. So we had a big family. And he, he had cows and he was a farmer. And he worked on the road. He did anything to make a living to keep the family going. Mm -hmm. And if you look out this window, and the, the house set down below, if you look out the window, you, we could see all of Willoughby Lake, most all of Willoughby Lake, with the mountains behind it. Very picturesque. 
I notice this is not for sale. No, it's not for sale. <laughs> do you sell prints of this one? I do. I do have some prints that I will sell and of this. The prints, are, are they on the www.colekeroriginals.com? Yes, because my maiden name is Cole. Oh, Cole. My dad is George Cole, and he built, yes, and he built the barn. So I go, I Elaine Cole Kerr is what people can find me on Facebook if they look under Elaine Cole Kerr or if they look under Vermont Paintings they will find me. And this is just Cole Kerr Originals. And yes, we decided to call the little, our little business Cole Kerr Originals. That's why this, that's why the frame is like an old barn. Mm -hmm. Because it really goes well with a painting. It does. Yes, it does. Okay, well. So I'm very fond of this one. Well, the, when, she, when you're talking about that, I have to say that I have favorites just like the public has favorites. <laughs> and this one, can you tell me, this is my favorite. I love the way you did the light behind the mountains, but that is definitely Willoughby to me. That's a watercolor that I did. Um, and a good friend of mine captured this scene and has allowed me to paint this. And it's the Milky Way and the stars and everything over, over wow. Willoughby. Isn't that something? And Rod built this beautiful frame. And it's a bird's eye maple, right? Frame? Yeah, it's a maple yeah. frame. Yeah. Did you yeah. like this one too, this painting? Yeah, I it's, like most of them. Yeah, <laughs> it's very sculptural. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And you also do the covered bridges. Could you tell me about that and how it got started and who, who, who you work with? Well, I am and doing... And how many there are. Yes. <laughs> I, let me show you the painting to start with. I'll hold this up because this is the 2022 covered bridge calendar. Of, and how many altogether are, are you doing? There's 110 historical covered bridges in the state of Vermont. And I started out, I went down to the Fisher Bridge and I took a picture of it. And I came home and I, I painted the Fisher Bridge. And I was showing it to my sister. And she says, oh, she says, that is, is really beautiful. She said, you really need to paint all of the bridges in the state of Vermont. Sisters are helpful. Sisters are helpful. <laughs> and she had an idea that that would be a great thing, that people would love it. And people are loving it. And so I, I now have only 46 left, which tells you that I am up to the year 2026. These are my calendars. This is 2021 that came out this year. This is 2022. And this one here is the... Uh, Troy covered bridge that burned, unfortunately. Well, this is a commemorative piece then. It is. And yes. it's being sold at Trap Family Lodge in their gift shop? It's at Trap. It's at the, um, the bookshop and bookstore in Stowe. Yeah. The I bet Bear, it used Bear to be Pond. Bear Pond. Yeah. It is Bear Pond. Yeah. And a lot of area uh, stores and yeah. Yeah. What about the Western Country Store? Do you have anything down I there? I have not gotten to the Western Country Store. I That's, should. I love that area. Yeah. It's really, yeah. they I, did a great job. I'm in mostly store. the Northeast Kingdom. Is, the the Northeast know, where, Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But those have been good sellers and people are loving them. And right now, 2023, 2023 and 2024 are pretty much finished at, at my printers. So. I'm ahead of the game. <laughs> you are. So how long have you been painting about? And tell me about your journey as an artist. Well, like I said, I did a lot of gifts for different people. And I, I worked at the Craftsbury, retired from the Craftsbury Care Center in Craftsbury. I'm, I'm a local Vermonter. Rod's a local Vermonter. We're born and brought up here. Have no plans of leaving Vermont. <laughs> no reason to leave. No reason to leave. We love it here. We, it's God's country here. It is. It is. He's got his thumb on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, my granddaughter actually called me one day and she said, after I'd retired, and it was just before Christmas, and she said, could you paint my mother a Madagascar owl for Christmas? And a Madagascar owl is very beautiful. It's orange and red. And I said, well, sure. 
So I painted the owl. And then I started painting the dogs of the children that we have, and they all got a painting of their animal. And it just blossomed after that. So, so people know, can just send you a photograph. They can, yes. And you can work from that. I do. Yeah, I do that a lot for people. I do a lot of their homes, their animals. Yeah. Yeah. And it's rewarding to make people happy and see a smile on their face. Oh, and, and it's so personal. Mm -hmm. And you, every You just did one of two dogs in Hawaii. I did. Yes. Well, do do they do you frame them, or do they get their own frames for them? Most of them... Right, frames. Frame them. Yeah. You do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you seem to be very compatible with the frames that you... That you right. They, they match what she's painted. Right. So, we do, you know, we mat them, put the matting on, frame them. Right has a really good eye for the, the mat and the frame. And we work together and try to pull it all together. And it's a whole piece. It is. And it's yeah. really nice because usually if people go and buy a frame, <laughs> it's almost sometimes more than the cost of right. the painting. Right, it is. So to be yeah. a teamwork like that mm -hmm. is, is really ideal. And he does custom work for people too. If they want a frame made, he will do it for them. Oh, that's He's, good to know. He just finished one well, last week. A, mm -hmm. a lady came and she had a, a photograph that she wanted framed, and he matted it and framed it for her. So. Well, that's really good to know. Mr. Savage, when he retired from in Stowe from the, hotel, the inn that they had, um, he used to make frames, and he did my frames for years. Mm -hmm. And when he passed away, I really, I really missed, missed that him. help. Yeah, right. But you just sort of clamor along and figure it out as you go. Mm -hmm. But. It's it's really interesting journey to be an artist and it is. you know when you look at things and you realize how to analyze it mm -hmm. in order to create a painting True. through a photograph or from the plain air. I noticed you have a lot of plain air paintings as well. I do. I I've done some plain air. Um, I find it a little more difficult because the light changes so quickly. Everything changes. <laughs> it does. You so. have to nail it in yeah. that underpainting. And right. Once you get yeah. there, you can carry on with the shadows. That's right. Yeah. But it's fun. It's nice getting out there. But it's a lot of work, too, because you have to take all your paints out. And, and I'm not a, an artist that works, per se, from a, a, an easel. I work down. I work on the counter, and I work down. Flat. Yeah, on the flat, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I like to have a photograph that I can look at on my iPad because I can get the detail and I'm a great detail person. I like to make sure that I have it fairly correct, you know, and, and I bring it in and check it out. So my iPad has been a big help to me. That's interesting. Yeah. Being, yeah. This one here is another one. These are my daisies. And this is a special one too, and I, I'm just going to hang on to this one. Well, it's special. Yeah. Uh, the sky in the background that you did is really beautiful. It, is that all watercolor? It is. And it looks, the way you have the, the clouds, it is as though they're praising, you know, yes. creation. Yes. I mean, that's the way, and it even feel, you can you know, almost feel the wind in, in the daisies. Mm -hmm. It is a beauty. Thank you. Isn't it interesting? You sort of know when you hit. You do hit your best stride. You do. Yeah, and and it's like it's like a gift that's given to you. <laughs> it you, is. This is definitely a gift, a God-given gift for me because I'm self-taught, and He's teaching me. That's how I feel. This one here. It's participating in in the creation. It sort is. Of. Yeah. Yes. That is a nice one. This is, uh, Rod really favors this one. He likes this one. This is not his frame. This is one. <laughs> Let's mm -hmm. keep falling. This is one that um, I put it in. I, I, I kind of like the black frame. We may change it later on. But he named this one Mirror of Willoughby. Mirror of Willoughby. That's yeah. lovely. It's a good, re good reflection. That's an oil painting. Actually, this is an acrylic that I oh, did. Oh, acrylic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you like the acrylic? I work with a lot. Actually, no, you're right. That is an oil painting. I'm sorry. That is an oil. But I, I do like acrylic very much. 
Um, this, that one. This one here, I'm sure around Greensboro, most everybody will recognize this one. This is from the Highland Lodge with Caspian in the background and their famous lupins that bloom every year. It's well painted. Thank you. And those, those lupins, I wonder how they get those to grow all the time. They come up every year. I guess they know when to cut them and when not to cut them. And Probably. Well. I don't believe they mow there at all. No. No. Okay, so they just let them fall like the snows do. Mm -hmm. Down in Stowe, coming into Stowe, they have a lot of lupins there. They're beautiful. They're just so stalwart. This one here, I, I love the moon, and we can sit here and watch the full moon come up over the mountain. Yeah, I saw the moon coming up just a few minutes ago out yes. the window, very pale, because yeah. it's early in the day, but the, it's a, you caught that. Thank you. The rising moon. The rising moon, yeah. And you had one of the harvest moon, I thought. Right? I do. Uh, but we don't need to show that. Because it's far away. I know it's in another space. Right, it is okay. in another space. There's, qu there's quite a lot here to see. Mm -hmm. um, and when you come, uh, do you call first? Uh, I, I'm, I'm open. In the summertime, I'm open most every day. I put my sign out by the road. Okay. And it's, it says Colker Originals. And yeah. But people can call me. Okay. Uh, and, and make an appointment to come and visit if they'd like to. So yes. you're always prepared. I try to be. That's wonderful. <laughs> they may find me in my paint shirt. <laughs> Not like this. <laughs> well, but I'm that's sure okay that, too. Yeah. And this one is just up the road from us. It's a, it's a painting that I did. It, one day the uh, trees were all glistening, cold with ice. Uh, Rod calls it rind, the rind on the trees. Mm -hmm. the, the rind? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I never heard that before. Yeah. And so that's uh, the driveway that goes up to our friend's house. It's a nice one. I don't think I have any more here yeah, I've got on this my one. side. I've got this one here, which is the fall scene. And this one is our road out front. And a lot of people say, I just want to walk up that road. <laughs> and a lot of people do walk up this road. And Rod built this nice barn board frame. Yeah, they're really yeah, it's something. So. They work. Yeah. And you matted it so well. Right. That's, yeah. well, I'm really happy so. to be able to talk to you about this. Is there anything else you would like to share about? Well, I do have note cards. I sell note cards. Um, these can be, some are at the uh, Trap Family Lodge gift shop. Um, some of these can be found online or if people want to come. I didn't I, see this one. I have a card shop. That is actually one I just finished. For Is uh, that your house? No. That's somebody else's That belongs house? to a gentleman in New York. Oh. And he, he purchased that and then I made some cards from it. It's lovely. Okay. And this and the loon, loon, is that a traps? No. You've got to get these loons over there. <laughs> it's really a nice loon. It's we just... got to, to talk the buyer <laughs> into picking those out. She came and picked out some. She picked out this one, the uh -huh. Highland... Uh, oh, the yeah. Scottish, Scottish Highlanders. Highlanders. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I, I... And this, the sap buckets, I paint on the sap buckets sometimes. You know, some people can't afford a, a, a big painting or don't have room for a big painting, but they like to pick up something like this. Do you have a price range? I mean, like, I don't go over a certain amount with right. murals, but I, so I, I, but is it all well, different? It, it all depends on the amount of hours I put into it and, and Rod's time with the framing. It's a lot and of time, isn't it? It is. It's really time consuming when you start. And sometimes he started with a log. You tell yeah, me that, about that. Usually where I start with the first batch of wood, I happened to notice a couple of logs in the wood pile. And I pulled them out and had them sawn. Mm -hmm. And since then, I've been, I just go down back in the woods and 
cut a tree and pull a log out, have it sawn, and right now we've got a bunch of it all sitting in the barn, waiting for it to dry down enough, but a lot of it's cherry, maple, ash, Beautiful. native, most of it is all, 99% of it's all native wood. Once in a great while I will purchase a piece of popple or something from the local lumber yard, but... But it's from Vermont, it's the wood from Vermont. Yeah. Well... And then he planes it, and he sands it, and he cuts it. <laughs> it's a process. It is. Yeah. And you also have to have it fit, the, have a place for it to fit behind mm -hmm. the frame in mm -hmm. right. the front. Yeah. Rabbit, then, rabbit it out so that it... I think that's a hard, the, a hard part. Getting that right. Well, <laughs> it all comes together in the end, end if it you does. can see. Yes, I do. And I hope people will come and see. And um, it'll You're be... You're welcome. Yeah. yeah it'll, be, it'll be mostly in the summer that you get your guests, I would imagine. Mostly, yes. Yeah, but I, people have been coming. Any time of year. Christmas shopping, yeah. If they want to take a drive up, if it's a nice day, they could give me a call. Um, is it okay to give my phone number? Or? Oh, it's up to you. <laughs> okay, it's the phone number would be 802-533-2333. And I'm here most of the time. It's quite a distance from Greensboro, from Willie's store. Mm -hmm. Three miles. Three miles, is that all it is? It felt yeah. like a long ride. <laughs> Well, that's well, very close. It's only three miles. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. But actually, where we're located here, it's almost in the center of the town of Greensboro, which is six, you know, the township, and we're just about dead center in the town. I know Dr. Carver lived up there for a while, but uh, that's as far yeah. as I'd ever gone on that road. <laughs> <laughs> it's it with Sandy with the delivering the oil. We go next door, mm -hmm. but that that I had forgotten where we came from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, it's it's really a beautiful ride. It is, and it's Greensboro worth just, gorgeous. just coming out just to take a ride. It is. Where are those wooden pieces that you took off from the door? Uh, Over here. Behind me. Behind you. Oh, that's a slab that you painted right on the on the wood. This is yes. And this is Willoughby. And that's a monochromatic. It's all in blacks and grays. Yes, it is. And whites. Yes. And, and there's a pair? No, this is different. But okay. this this is the scene that I I saw as a child growing up from that the window from the barn and the house. And you probably did that from memory. I could do it from memory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this one here is on a piece of charred maple. Ooh, interesting. Wow, that really works well with a monochromatic, doesn't it? This tree, it burned. Mm -hmm. and, well, uh, the, house, the house burnt, and that was the old Collier farm. Oh. Up the road. Up the road further. And the house burnt. I remember hearing about that. And the tree in the dooryard was killed from the fire. Wow. And so some of the ancestors asked if they could, because his grandfather had planted the tree, and he asked if he could have the dead tree. And the owner said, yes, you can have it. So he bought the tree and had it cut up saw an out, and he gave us some of the wood from it. But his bad. father has, there was a piece of wood that's probably, oh, must be four feet long and maybe about two inches thick that he made into like a coffee table. And Elaine painted a picture of the old farmhouse where they grew up. Wonderful. In black and white. In black and Just white. Just a touch of color. And it had the grandparents walking hand in hand oh, back to the house. That's that It was story. very touching. Very, okay. yes. And, and you have a painting of 
the two older people walking hand in hand in, but that's in not, Ireland, yeah, right? Yeah, but that's not the same. Okay. Yeah. But um, he was very touched by that because it was such great memories of being on that, that farm with his grandparents. That's quite a story. I love the way the, the only place you put color here is in the lake, lake yes. and a little bit of green, but you have in the lake, it's a, it's a beautiful bluish color. This is uh, the view when you go up to Bar Hill mm -hmm. and look down. Oh. This is the view from Bar Hill. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a cold hill to ski on in the winter when it's 30 below. <laughs> <laughs> we did that once. It was good to get home that day. Right. That is yeah. really nice. So, and I love the charred uh, wood around it. Mm -hmm. so and I've, I've done quite a few pieces like this. And if someone has anything special that they, they like done, I can do it. And I've also done some on the, it's, I call it a mushroom. It's a conch that grows on trees. Oh, right. yes. Just, uh... Yes. Yeah, and it's, it's... It's like a fan. It is. Right. Yes. Yeah. I had one my brother found. He's a logger, and he found it in the woods, and it was a big mushroom in the front, in the back, and then a smaller mushroom in the front. Hmm. So I did the north end of Willoughby and the south end of Willoughby. Oh, my Island. word. Does he, does he have that? No, that's sold. <laughs> oh, it's sold. Yeah, but I that know. was a special piece, very yeah. special piece. Yeah. You were brave to sell it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's this is what we do. It's just well, it's been a real pleasure been, to meet you both, and well, thank you. I hope I see you again. And when when I have my people come for, I do open studios. I'll I'll, I'll let them Send know you're here way. all the time. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Do you have anything else you want to share with us about your growing up and what your visual experience is in life? Well, just, I love Vermont so much. I mean, I've worked, I did commercial plumbing for years, and we worked in Boston area for five years, and then just finally said, We've had enough of this. And it was just coming home one day and I said, you've been a total idiot for just overlooking what you have here. And just said, that is it. So. You're here to stay. I am here to stay, you know, born and brought up here. I mean, my family was, some of my family, my mother's side of the family were the first settlers of the town of Linden. And what was that name? Uh, they were Bemis. Oh, Bemises. I know that name. So tell me about the wild boar that's in... The Lincoln. wild boar that sits <laughs> in Linden Center? Yes. Uh, it's French, it was, I think. I think that was bought by T.N. Vale, is the one that purchased that in Italy. It came from Italy. Oh, Italy. And they set it up there. But as a kid, I don't know if you can even put this on TV. You may want to blimp me for this, but <laughs> we always called it the puking pig because it was a fountain and the water was always... It's always had that name. <laughs> right. It's, it's quite a piece, really. <laughs> right. It is. But I always wondered, how did it ever get there? Right. I believe T.N. Vale was the one that purchased that and gave it to the town as a, you know, a gift. That's some interesting, and, and I think um, Larry Golden did a painting of it, a mural somewhere of, of that very man. Uh, was he the founder of uh, Linden Center? No, T.N. Vale was, uh, I think he was the founder of at and I don't know. Tell some big telephone company, maybe uh, Ma Bell. Kurt <laughs> could uh, oh. give you more information <laughs> on that, but I know he was. So he was a summer person? Right, well, he moved up from New York City or Boston and bought the Vail, Vail Hill and where Linden State College is now. I see. 
Well, that's wonderful. And then there was Henry Darling, which owned, what was it, Fifth Avenue Hotel? I really don't know. In New York City that was another entrepreneur that came up from New York that, but I think originally he was, Darling would, came from Lindenville, or Linden, and went to New York City and worked with his uncle in the hotel and ended up acquiring the whole empire. And then he came back in what was Bemis Hill, and they called Darling Hill now in Lindenville, or in the town of Linden. He bought most of that, and that's where a lot of my ancestors, they owned that whole track of land. Boy, the history is so interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How things come about. And we have a really good historical society now in Hardwick. Right. Uh, we started, mm -hmm. it, and they, they bought the um, train station, and then now, I mean, Mrs. Hussey and mm -hmm. Liz Dow and all these people have really put it together. And there was another woman in Hardwick, I can't recall her name, but she had a lot of photographs. And they just they just have put that historical society together. Mm -hmm. and it, it, it's really necessary. I, right, I, it is necessary, especially for this, you know, for the northeast corner of Vermont, there's a not... I mean, there's been a lot written about Ethan Allen and about this one and that one, but you take St. Johnsbury, I mean, the Fairbanks family, Fairbanks Scales, there was, at one time, it was a real bustling area, Hardwick, with the granite, and now the granite quarry is back open in Woodbury, and they employ probably 25, 30 people there. Wow, I didn't know that. Which is and Calvin Coolidge coined the Northeast Kingdom uh, phrase, didn't he? Mm, I don't. Yeah, I think I there's think been a lot of politicians called the Calvin Northeast Coolidge. Kingdom a lot of different things. But. I think he coined it because I went to a lecture in the hotel there uh, in Linden. Is I would get it mixed up, Lindenville or Linden Town, but there's a there was a hotel there, and his secretary, who he married was giving a lecture there a long time ago, and I went to it, because <laughs> I, right. I liked Calvin Coolidge. And um, that's where I learned that quotation. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, that I heard that she said that he coined the mm -hmm. phrase, the Northeast Kingdom. It very well could be. I was thinking it was one of the governors from the state of Vermont. That oh, a governor, maybe Aiken. I was thinking it was Aiken. Oh, I've got it mixed up. It was his secretary right. that gave the lecture, and it was Thomas Aiken. He said, "Yeah, this is the northeast that corner. Is this is the Thank northeast you. kingdom." And Thank you for correcting me. Right, because it was important to me for some reason, but I, it couldn't have been Calvin Coolidge's secretary because no, it was that far. Because actually, Calvin Coolidge came from the southeastern corner. Southeastern corner of Vermont. Well, was was Aiken actually from the Northeast Kingdom? No, I don't believe he was, but I know Governor Bell was. I see. Which, well, the portrait of Aiken for me is my favorite portrait. We all have favorites of our art, as that's why you have to make your choices when you're buying art, which <laughs> is your favorite. And uh, his portrait, it's small. But it's such a great portrait. You know what I would like when I get all of my covered bridges painted what? and hopefully framed? I want to display them somewhere for everyone to see all the hard work that went into all these beautiful bridges. And how, you know, they're so historical and they're still, most of them are still alive. And, and they didn't even have know, power tools. No. They, some of them need work, and I hope the state continues to keep improving and taking care of these bridges, because uh, that is our history. It is, and I think they will. And our history is so important. It is. Everything in our life. It is. Yeah. They were hard-working people. They and were. Yeah. I remember somebody told me once a Vermonter could go anywhere in America and be hired, because their reputation for work was so good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thorough. Yeah. Strong. Mm -hmm. Good people. Yeah, great people. Yeah. So, 
Well, thank you I for hope, having us. Yeah, we well, thank you this. for having us. We're <laughs> happy to be here and talking to you. It's a privilege. Thank it really you. is. And to see your work. Yeah. And, I and to know about Willoughby. Yeah, well, it, it's special. I, I tell everyone, anyone that comes to visit, you need to go see Willoughby Lake. Yeah. It's very, very beautiful. Could you have to show that one of the heart tree, or that one's not finished yet? It isn't, but you can go grab it. Which one is he getting? The heart. Bring the moon, too, if you want. The heart and the moon. On the table. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It's one that I've started. It's, um, they both are in uh, pastels. But they're going to be beautiful when they're finished. It's always good to show work that you're working on, I think, because people don't realize how long it can take, take it you to do it. Okay, this one. My stepson, Rod's son, found this one in the woods, and it's an ash tree. But if you look at the top, oh, see the heart? Yeah, I do. And the upside down heart on right. the bottom, and it caught my eye, and I said, I, you know, I really want to paint, uh, do this, paint this. And I decided to do it all in pastels, and I'm very happy with the way it turned out. And uh, Johnny was here, and I said, we were trying out different frames, and he says, well, how about you get some ash and, and frame it with an ash frame? So, so you're looking for an ash tree. We're looking tree. for an ash tree to, to, yeah. to complete Maybe this Maybe somebody one. out there has some ash. Maybe they'll <laughs> right. hear this in their it's a local but station. This tree right here is probably 14 inches in diameter, and this one is like three to four feet. He said, he said it's one of the biggest trees he's ever come across in the woods. Wow, it's huge. And, and did he, he notice the hearts when he photographed it, or did you point that out when you I, I didn't did know. it? I didn't ask if he noticed the hearts, but I noticed them right off. But he did, he sent it to me, and he says, nobody's home. That, no, and so that's what it's He went over and looked in the... Nobody's home. Oh, nobody's <laughs> he home. said there was no tracks. And then he went and looked, and then... No bear popped out. Nothing popped out. I noticed you have a bear here. Did you shoot that bear? No. Actually, my son shot that one. Okay. And the one that keeps know. opening and closing the door downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the moonrise. This is our view that we get, and this is the harvest moon. Harvest moon. So once that, the gold, I believe, kind of just picks up what's in there. So that will be very, very beautiful when Rod finishes it and puts the frame around it. It will. Do I you really sign them? I do. In, you do? ACK. That's my logo. Oh, that's I my see. Logo. There it is, right? Yeah. Okay. Elaine Cole Kerr, ACK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. lovely. That's a good one to So if anyone close wants with. to see this finished, They'll have to come and visit. They'll have to come and visit. <laughs> and would you print that out and sell it as I a would. print? Yes, I would do that one. Yes. Most of them I do, I will print. I have some prints already out there that, that are available. And people can go through those? Yes. That's yeah. wonderful. OK. And my prints are reasonable. <laughs> you know. Thank you very much, Rod. We look forward to seeing you the next time.